I'm Bart Kelsey, and you're watching an OpenGameArt.org tutorial on how to avoid the appearance of repetitive textures while using tiling textures. Um, now, you know, if you're a big game studio and you've got millions of dollars and and a really up-to-date game engine, it's possible that you might be able to have a unique texture for everything. Um, but, you know, I'm assuming in this video that, you know, maybe you're on a budget, maybe you don't have that much time. Um, to uniquely texture every single building that you have, so you, you're working with some tiling textures and you want to avoid having your textures appear repetitive. Um, what we're looking at right here is a sort of hastily put together crappy wall that I made, um, and you can see one texture on here, and uh, this texture has uh, s sort of the, these white areas here that make it not particularly great. I mean, you can see how it repeats over and over again. Um, and, you know, for, for somebody playing your game, that can be a little bit immersion breaking. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of ugly. Um, but, it, you know, basically, there's a pretty easy way that we can go about fixing this that, that I'm going to show you today. Um, now, first, I'm going to show you an example of this done very well. Um, I have in here a Skyrim screenshot. Um, now what I, what I like to do sometimes when I'm playing games where the graphics impress me is I kind of go through and I look very closely at what, they, what it is they're doing from a technical standpoint um, so that I can figure out how I might you know learn from it, imitate it in my own work um, and make my stuff better. Um, so what we're looking at here is this Skyrim tower and as you can see there are different texture areas here um, and what, what that's doing is kind of avoiding the, the appearance of using a repeating texture. Um, and also with the way these textures are put together, you know, the tower looks like maybe it was built a long time ago and then repaired, you know, using different stones, kind of different type of masonry there. So, so not only have you, you know, taken out the, the issue of, of having your, your texture look repetitive, but, you know, they've also... Um, given the building a sense of history um, by having these multiple types of stone masonry here. Um, so basically, I'm going to try to kind of imitate this a little bit with my wall. Um, obviously, it's not going to look as good as this. Uh, you know, the, the, the Skyrim textures are pretty amazing, frankly, um, and the textures I'm using aren't so great. And I've also done it a little bit faster and taking some shortcuts, but what this should do is at least demonstrate to you uh, how you might go about getting rid of repetitiveness in your own games um, with your textures. Uh, so let's zoom in here really quick um, on this area right here. Um, and as you can see, uh, one thing they're not doing is, is doing a smooth blend between the two textures. They've got this, uh, you know, look, it what they're doing, as far as I can tell, is using a height map um, to determine which texture is on top. Um, so you've kind of got this sharp edge that sort of blends in, uh, or rather looks sort of correct in terms of, you know, the the height of the textures here. Um, so it looks like the one is kind of going over the other one as opposed to just like this smooth blend, which is uh, you know, a pretty obvious way of doing it. Um, and, you know, so, so the, I think this looks a lot better than a smooth blend would. So, so basically, I'm going to kind of try to show you how we can achieve that effect. Um, so let's go back here to the 3D view. Um, I'm going to start out by sort of painting over it so we can see this this really ugly texture here. Um, so now just a quick overview. The way I'm doing this is I have Blender set to texture rendering um, and that's going in here with my my node setup which I'm going to just split the screen here so we can take a look at both at once and that will allow us to uh, make changes to the nodes and sort of watch what happens in real time which is really in my opinion one of the best features of Blender is you can, um, it, you know, basically what it's going to allow us to do is kind of paint over and use one texture to cover up the other one and see how that's actually affecting things so we're not just guessing. So 
here is our node setup. Um, so it, it looks kind of complicated. It's not really as bad as it looks. And so I'm going to kind of go through and explain um, most of the parts that are unique to what I'm trying to do. Um, right here, I'm going to kind of skip over the geometry and mapping node because those are just about kind of getting the texture onto the object. Um, if you've gotten as far as building an object in Blender and texturing it, you already you know know how to do this. Um, and if not, there are plenty of tutorials out there, so I'm not really going to cover that. Um, what we see here, though, are these three texture nodes. Um, and if you take a look at the previews, uh, this first texture, uh, the, looking at the preview on the right, is sort of a clean-looking uh, stonework texture. Uh, the second one is this more grungy, old-looking one that, that we've got up there right now. Um, the third texture is what I'm using for a mask. Um, so I'm going to go in here and clean this out to black just so we can kind of get a fresh start. Um, and now, you know, once again, one of the nice things about Blender is I can view all of these textures independently just by clicking on a particular output node. Um, so let's go to the main one. Um, as you can see here, we've got uh, we've got these uh, sort of areas where we've got this white stuff here. So, you know, there, there's that repetitive stuff, and that, that's the first thing I'm going to try to get rid of. Um, so basically what I'm, going to, what I'm going to be doing is painting onto this mask, and for starters, we're just going to kind of smoothly blend the, uh, the two textures together. Um, so I'm going to go right here. Uh, look at this texture. I'm going to bring up the brush again um, in the texture paint mode. Um, and I'm just going to kind of start painting here. Um, so now if we go back to the main texture, you can see now that this other uh, area is showing through with the newer stonework. Um, but like I said, uh, this is Blender, so we can actually do this in real time. So I can kind of go through here, and I'm just going to sort of touch this up a little bit, make the brush a little bit smaller, and uh, I'm going to get rid of some of these ugly areas right here with the, the repeating whiteness. Um, and just add some random kind of stuff throughout. Um, so, you know, it, we've got this smooth fade, but, you know, already both at a distance and probably not so much up close because the fade becomes obvious, but at a distance the wall looks fairly decent. Um, so now what I'm going to do is show you how to use this mask and uh, set it up using the luminosity of this texture here so that it will kind of make the stone masonry, the, or sorry, the, the mortar between the stones will spread out and, and kind of go into the other texture uh, rather than just having them fade smoothly. Um, so as you can hear, see here, here's the luminosity, and, and conveniently the mortar is very bright. Um, I've put it through this RB, RGB curves just to kind of increase the contrast a little bit, but the mortar here is really bright. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm taking this texture here, and the first thing I'm doing is adding that to this. Um, so as you can see, the mask is uh, kind of taken on this more detail. Now, the cool thing about this mask texture is it's only 64 by 64. It doesn't have to be big at all. In fact, it's pretty tiny uh, because this is so, you know, because we're smoothing it out like this, we can kind of take advantage of the fact that, you know, we've got this pixel smoothing because, you know, there's not a whole lot of detail to it. Um, but then if we come over here, we're adding this detail from the luminosity of this other texture. Um, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this through a couple of color ramps um, and we're going to end up with an output that looks kind of like this. So as you can see, uh, you know, if we zoom in up close, there are these areas where the texture is completely there and then there are these areas where it's just the mortar and then the mortar fades off very, very quickly. Um, and you know, so I can kind of play around with the color ramps and basically what I want to do is sort of maximize the area with the mortar, but then still have these solid areas too, um, while also having a fairly sharp fade. I don't want to be doing that. That's not going to look quite so good because the mortar will fade in. Got to keep that fairly tight together there. Um, 
so we're gonna look here and you know this this is the final result of this you know if we kind of run that through this contrast and these two uh, color ramps um, and then we're gonna take this color output here and we're gonna move that into the factor so that's now how these two colors are mixed together um, and we're gonna look at the final output um, so now I don't personally like the look of this but if we zoom in at least uh, you can see how this mortar is kind of coming in and mixing with these uh, these other stones but the stones themselves uh, don't really blend too much the mortar doesn't really blend too much it's kinda kinda eases into the other texture without that weird smooth blend that is pretty unrealistic uh, so what I'm gonna do here right now is just go through and I'm gonna just sort of do this over because I don't really like the look of it at this point um, so now I've kinda cleaned that up um, and I'm gonna go back with my black and you know basically I'm just shifting between black and white here um, where white is the the clean looking texture and black is kind of the old texture um, now one thing I you know notice about a lot of walls is you know down near the foundation them they might be a little bit different um, so I'm gonna fill this in here um, let's turn the strength down on the airbrush a little bit go back kind of blending it up so the first thing we've done is we've kind of changed the bottom of the wall um, and now I'm gonna go with a smaller brush um, I'm gonna go up and uh, you know, maybe even smaller than that and kind of uh, make it look like there are some spots where maybe the wall has been repaired a little bit with this sort of uglier cheaper stone masonry um, yeah, we kind of get up around the edges too a little bit um, basically just uh, sort of give the impression that the wall has had some history and been kind of repaired and rebuilt over the course of time um, now here you can see there's these white spots again that, that I'm not a big fan of so I'm just going to kind of go back in here and uh, and erase them and there we go so, so now we've got this this wall where if you zoom in on it and you know it's not doesn't I would say look nearly as nice as the Skyrim example does but the uh, stone masonry the the uh, the mortar kinda comes through here and blends with the mortar of this other wall um, and I think that gives a much better effect than just the smooth transition um, so you know if you zoom out um, there's kinda this sort of have this neat effect here um, with a wall that doesn't look repetitive at all um, at least not too much and where it does and zooming it out is a good way to find this stuff you can kinda go in and fix it um, so that's pretty much it um, now once again th this is something you can do in pretty much any game engine that's at least reasonably modern um, it's not really at all unique to blender in fact you could take what you've done in blender and presumably import it using shaders in another engine to do pretty much exactly what we've done here with this node setup or you could just use these nodes in the blender game engine itself um, so that's pretty much it I will see you guys next tutorial um, and I hope this will be helpful to everyone thank you